everybody, Jason Burmis here for WeAreChange.org. And today we're going to be talking about the SPLC, or the Southern Poverty Law Center. Now, this group espouses to warn the American people and the world about extremist groups, about hate groups, and about anti-Semitic groups. However, their past is littered with distortions and lies, including trying to lump this organization, We Are Change, Luke Radowski, the founder, and even the film I produced, Loose Change, into these hate groups. Now, of course, anybody that's followed my work, Luke's work, or the overall work of We Are Change knows that this is absolutely not the case. So who is the SPLC, or Southern Poverty Law Center? Before we explore this topic, I want to invite everybody to click on the new Join button that you can find below this video. Folks, if you want to sponsor WeAreChange.org, this may be the best way to do it for only $4.99 a month. You'll get an exclusive badge as well as access to exclusive We Are Change emojis, which of course will put you at the front of the line for our Sunday live streams and beyond to ask questions and interact with us. So if you really want to support independent media like ours, please click the join button and subscribe at $4.99 a month today. Now, according to the priorities listed on their own website, they include fighting for children's rights, economic justice, immigrant justice, of course, LGBT rights, and criminal justice reform as well as fighting hate and extremism. However, when you search the site for groups such as Antifa, they are not on the list of extremist or violent groups. Even though we have many, many examples of this group using violence, hiding their face, and of course, espousing extreme beliefs. The Southern Poverty Law Center, based in that building in Alabama, calls itself the premier group monitoring hate groups. Looking at their map of such groups, you'd think America was consumed by hate. Today, the center smears people who don't deserve to be smeared. The presence of radical Islam. This woman grew up in Somalia, suffered female genital mutilation, so now she speaks out against radical Islam. For that, the center put her on its list. So while the SPLC refuses to call out actual groups that do commit violence and atrocious acts against people, they have time and time again tried to lump in patriot activist groups with violence, anti-Semitism, and a load of other charges that are nothing more than BS. Recently, Big League Politics did an article on the co-founder of the SPLC, Morris Dees. They were able to obtain court documents filed by his first wife in the 1970s that make some pretty startling allegations. Now, before we go any further, I would like to state that these are allegations by his ex-wife that were brought into a courtroom and Dees was never convicted of any of the things we are about to discuss, as there were no criminal charges filed. So, what did his ex-wife Maureen allege? Well, she alleged that Morris attempted to molest his own stepdaughter with a sex toy. And with that, we're going to read directly from the court deposition. Morris' stepdaughter, Holly, testified that in the summer of 1977, Morris attempted to molest her in the following incident. One night, Maureen and Morris were sitting, drinking wine, and discussing a case Morris was trying, the brief says. Holly was with them. Around 11 or 12 o'clock, Maureen went to bed and Holly stayed up with Morris, discussing the case. Morris kept offering Holly wine, some of which she accepted. Holly testified that she declined, choosing to go to bed instead. She went to her room and then went into the bathroom, the document states. Looking out her window, she saw Morris in the bushes beside the bathroom window looking in. She said, Morris, is that you? But he said nothing and ran away. Two months later, apparently things got worse. Morris entered Holly's room. 
He was in his underwear and he sat on the bed where Holly was lying on her stomach, facing away from the door. He touched her on the back and woke her up. He told her that he had brought her a present and presented her with a vibrator. He plugged it in and said he had brought it to her. He proceeded to rub it on her back and said, let me show you how to use it. According to Holly's testimony, she declined, but Morris proceeded anyway. He started to place it between my legs when she raised her voice and said no loudly. However, that would not be the end of the incident. About two hours later, she had fallen back asleep and he came back in. He brought the vibrator with him, plugged it in, and said, let me show you how to use it. He tried to show her again by putting it between her legs, but she again raised her voice and he stopped. He then took it and left. Now, does this sound like the type of person you want deciding who should have free speech, who's evil, who is a white supremacist or neo-Nazi? Should this man be deciding what hate speech is when so much of our free speech has been curtailed in the name of censoring, quote unquote, hate speech? I suspect the center keeps its hate list long because crying hate brings in lots of money. Morris Deez's salary is more than my entire annual budget. Remember, this is a group that's supposedly fighting hate and extremism, but instead goes after groups that ask valid questions about large geopolitical issues and often does lump them in with real racists. This group also claims to fight for children's rights, but are they putting any information out there about people like former Seattle Mayor Ed Murray or Dennis Hassard, former Speaker of the House? Are they talking about Pedogate? Have they exposed anybody in large Hollywood circles that are abusing children? Well, the answer is no. So what exactly are they doing? Yesterday, CNN published a story with the headline, Here are all the active hate groups where you live. Now, this wasn't a list narrowed to neo-Nazis and violent anarchists, actual hate groups. In other words, the list was too large and grossly biased, and that's because CNN wasn't listing real hate groups. They were just listing hate groups as defined by the Southern Poverty Law Center, which is a totally irresponsible left-wing organization that casually throws around the term hate group in order to l raise money, and it's raised a lot of money doing that. We have a group that parrots the ideas of the mainstream media and goes after anybody that would ask legitimate questions or go against the grain. This is a group that is constantly attacking the Trump administration and anybody who's a constitutionalist and believes in the First and Second Amendment. As always, if you like this video, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter at Jason Burmis and be the change you want to see in the world.